And welcome into the Sporting News studios. Tom Vandervoort and Stephen Levine alongside Matt Crossman, senior writer, talking about one of the great debates in the Sporting News magazine this year, clutch performances, great individual performances in a championship setting. Now, I noticed number one on the list, Don Larson's perfect game, 1956 World Series. Yeah, that was a no-brainer. I mean, you could do th these type of lists that we would do it all year. If you got 100 people to do each one, they would all turn out differently. But this particular one, that was going to be number one. If, no matter how many people did the list, and if somebody didn't have that number one, well, you would just ignore it. And the interesting thing is Don Larson was, I think, career 81 and 91, had a losing record as a pitcher, and got hit pretty hard in game two of the series. So this is a real out-of-the-box performance for him. Yeah, definitely stands out. I mean, 55 years later, it's easily the most uh, recognizable record in baseball or, or moment in baseball, I would say, and I think it'll, it'll be that way for... There's really there's no way to top it. Well, why do you think it's so iconic? Is it that the, the Yankees and the Dodgers had been battling back and forth over the years in the mid '50s? Was it because it was the Yankees or the first perfect game? I mean, what what made that last? I think it's the perfect game aspect of it. That if, if more Don, than just a no hitter, you yeah, know, it's like that 27 up, 27 yeah. down aspect. If Don Larson had pitched that game for the Tigers against the Brooklyn Dodgers, we, I think we would still be talking about it. I the agree. fact that it was the Yankees makes it bigger. There's mm -hmm. no question. But a perfect game in the World Series is a perfect game. Because, I mean, really, when you think about it, a no-hitter is a lot more common than a perfect oh, game. Certainly. Now, another Yankee made the list, but before he became a Yankee, Babe Ruth actually made the list, but as a pitcher for the uh, Boston Red Sox. And then Reggie Jackson also, the Yankees, uh, made the list, too, the three home runs. Uh, three 77. Pitches, three swings, yeah. So I listened to that game on the radio. And I could not believe he hit, like, he hit another one. Well, what was amazing about that <laughs> is, is it wasn't just that he hit three home runs in a World Series game. It was that he hit three home runs on three pitches off of three different pitchers. Well, and I think it was the first pitch at each at bat. Yeah, right. It sure was. Yeah. So, I, I mean, <laughs> and it was a clinching game of the series, too. So, And then the, the other baseball performance on the list, Jack Morris, 1991. Mm -hmm. What was that, ten innings he threw? Yeah, ten ten innings. scoreless innings? Yeah. yeah I, uh, I, I talked to... Uh, uh, Dan Glyden scored the winning run in that game, and I talked to him about it once. And just what a you know, the, the whole game, just the whole moment was just. I mean, I remember that whole World Series was just awesome. And then the end, yep. I had a one nothing ten inning game with a shutout by a guy throwing. I mean, can you imagine? There's no way someone would throw ten innings today. Oh no. Think. And and when you talk about sort of like the idea of a gutty performance, I mean that was really oh, it. Really the cool. heart that that he showed in that game. And you know, it's interesting that he's a. Controversial would be stretching it, but Jack Morris, you know, he'll get Hall of Fame uh, love every once in a while. Right. People say, why? Not so much why isn't he in the Hall of Fame, but why isn't he at least closer? Take that game out, you don't even talk about it. Forget yep. it. But because of one singular performance, his status is, is far. I mean, he had a great career, no question. Led the entire league, the entire baseball, and wins in the 80s. Uh, but that performance pushed him up even higher. In some ways, a lot of these guys benefited in terms of their status oh, yeah. from yep. this one moment. Now, and there are other guys who was just one more chapter in their career, like to Jerry Rice, for yeah. example. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, you, as great as Jerry Rice was in this particular game that we're talking about, the Super Bowl uh, win against the Bengals, you could he could have not played in that game, and his status would not be diminished. Which is not to diminish his accomplishment in that game; it's to say this dude was. Inhumanly good. Well, I think the funny thing about that moment, too, was wasn't it John Taylor who scored the winning touchdown he did. in that incredible uh, last play? Yep. Now, so. an another guy who falls into that same category that we'd still be talking about whether or not he played in this particular moment or not is Magic Johnson. Yeah. When yeah. he stepped in, well, stepped in might not be the right words, but when uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar was injured and Magic sort of had to step into that role. Yeah, can you imagine? There's, there isn't a, a point guard. There isn't a player in the game today who could do that, I don't think. He was a rookie. I mean, that's the thing you have to remember. He was a rookie. Uh, Kareem goes down in game five. They go to Philly for game six, and he basically plays the center position and drops, what was it, 42 and 15? I mean, can you imagine? Uh, you know, and Jamal Wilkes goes off for 37, and they, you know what I'm saying? It's just. Twitter would explode just, if that happened. Twitter. I mean, Magic Johnson, the thing you forget about him is just he could kind of do what he wanted out there. He could just, whatever he wanted to do, whatever he decided to do, he could do. He was but, that yeah. transcendent of an athlete. But he was happy to be in whatever role was needed at the time. Hey, man, it was winning time, right? Yeah, that's what made him so interesting, too, is not only did it, he did it, but he did it with this, this flair and this artistry and this grin that was as big as the court. Uh, that just made it, what a, I mean, 
What a great guy to watch. And they had Bobby Jones, like, switching off from Magic to Jamal, and just, it just they couldn't stop yeah, him. He was a great defender. I mean, Bobby Jones was one he of the was. great defenders. And now, now, Tom, do you want to talk about Doug Williams? Well, that the was Redskins look, homer that you are. I remember that game very clearly. I think it was 87. Uh, Denver Broncos, Washington Redskins in San Diego. And, of course, after the first five minutes of that game, it looked like a rout, but not the way it turned out. I mean, the Denver scores on their first play from scrimmage, a long pass from Elway to, I can't remember, I think Barry Wilburn got burned. That's all I remember as a guy who got <laughs> burned. You sobbing uncontrollably. Uh, second quarter, the Redskins score five touchdowns, four in the air. Doug throws, Doug Williams throws two to Ricky Sanders, one to Gary Clark, and then very near the end of the half, got one to Clint Didier. And, I mean, it was just – it was 42-10 at the end. And people also forget in that game that Williams went down with an injury and yep. Jay Schrader took a couple sat snaps yep. in that game. Well, and Williams is one of those guys that we may not be talking about yep. if it weren't for that game. Really? Right. I mean, well, I mean, Doug Williams, when he came into the league, he came out of Grambling. There were not a lot of black quarterbacks that had played in the league yep. at that point. And he was, one, he was a very talented guy and had a, a good bit of success with Tampa Bay. But this was a moment, I yeah. think, a real signature moment well, for him. Well, if we would never talk about Don Larson without this perfect game and we would still talk about Jerry Rice without his game, Williams is somewhere in the middle. I agree with I, that. I think he's still a figure. He's still someone that we would talk about on occasion, but certainly winning a Super Bowl in the manner that he did, you know, it lifted I mean, 35 points in one quarter. That's, that's pretty good. That's <laughs> impressive. That's a, that was in that string of Super Bowls, frankly, that you thought, man, this game's terrible. You know, <laughs> we need to fix the Super Bowl or, or whatever. Uh, which, you know, thankfully in recent years has been, you know, the game's been a lot better, but that was an example of, you know. But it was in a series of Broncos blowouts because we had the Giants yeah. beating the Broncos and then we had the Niners yeah. somewhere in there. Blame it, on the, blame it on the 49ers and the Redskins blowing everybody away. Exactly. You don't mind blaming it on the Redskins, do you? You can blame it on the Redskins. I wish those days would come back. All now, right. There are lots more guys in here. We can't talk about all of them, no. but if you check out the August 1st issue of Sporting News, the magazine, or sportingnews.com, you can get on there and debate with this great debate.